Hey, it's Steve. Today is day 13 of my 30 days of video series and also water fasting at the same time. Quick update on the water fasting. That's still going well. Had great energy this morning. Was able to work several hours um, before noon and I'll probably work several more hours later this afternoon. Uh, just taking a bit of a break right now to record this video. Somebody asked me uh, what camera I'm using to film these videos and all of them but one I've just been filming on my iPhone 7. Not the 7 Plus, just the regular iPhone 7. Um, nothing fancy. Uh, and I think it was one of the videos, maybe the fourth one, that I filmed with a webcam at my desk. So, uh, yeah, just the iPhone. Um, the, uh, I don't have much more to share about the water fasting, still going well. I mean, my energy's good. Um, so, I, I feel like I'm in the easy part of the fast right now. Not sure how long that's going to last, but it's pretty much just coasting day to day now. I can even go for, you know, 30 to 60 minute walks without feeling extra tired. Um, not super fast, but it's, you know, at least I have some energy to move around now, which is really nice. And uh, so, well, today's topic I want to talk about is going to be pretty quick, not too complicated, because I just want to share one main point about this. And the topic is skill building. And, uh, you know, one of the problems I think people have with skill building is a lack of motivation to really keep moving their skill forward, whatever it is that they want to develop. Um, so, you know, let's say you want to develop your writing skills or get better at making videos or whatever it is. Um, programming skills, design skills, artistic skills, music skills, whatever it is, um, you know, what we tend to get indo indoctrinated by an educational system that has us develop these skills in a bit of a vacuum. We're just focused on, on the learning process so much. And I think that's a bit of a mistake because so much of the motivation in skill building comes from the chance to actually apply it. And so when we take the time to actually um, integrate the application of these skills with the learning process, we can really zoom ahead and learn the skill much faster because it's so much more motivating to get that feedback from other people on how we're applying the skills. Um, I learned computer programming when I was 10 years old and I used to share the programs I would write with other people. I'd write little games or simple things on my Atari 800 or an Apple II that I, that's, I was able to get access to uh, way back in the, in the 80s. And that was, that was really cool to be able to like share what I was doing with other people and it motivated me to want to learn a lot faster because then I could demonstrate my skills to other people. In high school as I continued learning programming, um, I would print out my programs in a a friendly teacher would photocopy them for me and pass them out to some of the other students, like in the math club or something, people who are interested in those particular programs. And then they could see how I, I would code things. And I would, and other people in the club would do the same thing and then I would learn from their skills and they would learn from mine. And sometimes I'd take their programs and try to rewrite them, like using half as many bytes or, you know, half as, half as much code to, uh, to do the same functionality. So that was kind of another layer of challenge. But it was that that motivation to share that made me like want to go home each day and program something just like for an hour and be able to share it with other students the next day. If I was just learning this on my own all by myself, I don't think I would have gotten nearly as far with those programming skills. And then later professionally, of course, it's programming with purpose to create um, computer games and things like that. And I found that so much of skill building is just like having that anchored to contribution in some clear way. And you can apply this to all sorts of things. You know, I developed my speaking skills because I would give speeches in Toastmasters or do speech contests. So I'd have to learn things like humor skills and then you'd, you know, go out and apply them. Uh, I joined an improv troupe for about three months in uh, 2006 that a friend of mine here in Vegas ran and performed in a couple of shows. And then every practice session that I went to, the idea was to train myself to actually perform in a live show while I was developing that skill. Um, you know, with, with public speaking in mind, it's like you're actually doing speaking. That's an easy one. What about learning music? Say learning to play the piano by yourself. Are you actually using that? You know, not just like practicing on your own, but are you actually playing for people, playing for friends and entertaining them or, you know, composing something and, and sharing it with people, giving some kind of contribution aspect to that skill? I think that's just absolutely critical if you want to learn to build skills so much faster. You can even look at it from you know, a perspective that the goal should come first, that um, if you set a goal that's beyond your skill level, then you'll be more motivated to build the skills necessary to achieve that goal. Uh, I certainly have had that show up in many ways, just like goals I set, which they're you know, out of alignment with my skills. I, I don't have the skills to do that. And so then I'm motivated to build the skills to achieve the goal. Just like you know, recording this uh, 30 days of video series, 
One of the reasons I'm motivated to do this is because my goal is to create video courses for Conscious Growth Club down the road. Later this year, I'll start getting into that. And I feel like I need to upgrade my skills first and get more practice doing video and see what people like and figure out how to share through this medium. And so, you know, if I, if I had tried to just upgrade my video skills in a vacuum without a clear goal in mind, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have gotten anywhere with it. <laughs> I've kind of had that thought in the back of my mind that I should get into video, get into video. But until I had a clear goal, I never took action on it. And then, you know, finally now I'm starting to take some action on it because that goal is propelling me forward. That's, that's the motivation to get good at this skill. And that's also a, a contribution goal. So it's ultimately about, you know, creating something and, and contributing um, through that skill set that you build. You know, it's it's kind of disappointing in college, you know, especially when I was in college, um, just how you know much the emphasis was on pure academics and learning things, learning skills in a vacuum, and not knowing how to apply it in the real world. Your application is just doing homework and things like that in the class, or assignments, or projects, papers, and so on. Um, even for computer programming, where it seems a little more, you know, hands-on, where you're actually writing code. You're just doing it for these mostly lame assignments instead of actually doing it for the purpose of um, you know creating and contributing something like sharing some value with your fellow students or creating something for the world so I think um, college in general would be much better if they had that kind of grounding effect so you know this is a simple lesson just want to share this idea that if you want to develop your skills more quickly look for a way early on as early as possible to ground it in contribution, to make some kind of contribution through the skills that you're learning, because that will zoom you ahead way faster in your skill building process.